Welcome to Monumental United Methodist Church in Old Town Portsmouth, where our vision for ministry is hands and hearts serving our neighbors. My name is Celeste Heath, and I'm the pastor at Monumental. We are honored and thankful that you choose to worship with us today. Thank you for your generous gifts to support our ministry in the community and the world. You may give through our website, through your online banking bill pay option, or through the mail. Our next Noonday concert will be Monday, March the 18th, and our featured musicians will be Carol Downing and friends playing Celtic music. March, with its Irish emphasis, is a great time to enjoy some Celtic sounds. So come enjoy the program and stay for lunch. We are now in the third week of Lent, and our Lent theme is, What Are You Up To? Instead of deciding what to give up for Lent, find ways to be up to something good. Today, let's pray about how we can raise up others so they can be the best they can be and know the mercy and grace of our loving God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and receive the blessings of our loving and merciful God. The Gospel of John tells the story of Jesus coming to the temple and finding a marketplace where goods were sold and exchanged. These businesses took advantage of the poor. The money was also exchanged to support the Romans. Jesus was angered by what he saw, and his response in turning over the tables may have been another step toward his ultimate crucifixion on the cross. He refers to raising up a new temple in three days, something his disciples remembered as a foretelling of his crucifixion and resurrection. How might we raise up as the body of Christ and be a holy temple, a holy dwelling place of God in the world? And God will raise you up on Let us pray together. God of restoration and rebuilding, we are here today seeking resurrection and renewal for our tired and worn out bodies and the body of this community. In this moment of quiet, we lift up to you those things we'd like to give up for good so we can be up to something good. Hear assurance in what the psalmist proclaims. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect, Reviving the soul, the decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together. And God will raise you up on eagles' wings.
As a people forgiven and freed, we reach out to lift others up, offering the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us sing together, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. If you have a hymnal at home, it is on page 384. chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple with the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And then the Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will, you, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After this, he was raised from the dead, and his disciples remembered that he had said this, and believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the message that you would have for us today so that we may help to raise others up and be up to something good. Amen. This past week was National Public Schools Week. It didn't get a lot of attention that I'm aware of. The first time I heard about it was on Thursday when I came across a video of Robert Reich, a former Secretary of Labor and current professor at the University of California, Berkeley. In this video, he was telling the story of his third grade teacher, Alice Camp. Reich arrived in her classroom in Lewisburg Elementary School in South Salem, New York in 1953. He was an extremely short, shy boy who was bullied and mocked on the bus and made to feel like a loser on the playground. He had no interest in school. Alice Camp, this wonderful third grade teacher, saw something in him that he didn't see. She gave him books to read and extra pr projects to work on. She challenged him and she praised him. She made him feel special. She didn't mind that he stayed in from recess and barraged her with questions. She didn't mind that he had an interest in other things that she liked as well. Her own love of literature made him feel like it was okay to read and love books. She made him understand that he wasn't a freak and that he might even be talented. She made him feel like there was no reason for him to be so fearful, so sad, so ashamed, or so alone in the world. Alice Camp raised him up to see what gifts he had and gave him confidence to use his interests and intelligence and curiosity about the world to become a world leader, to become a Rhodes Scholar, and a professor of public policy. Teachers are often given the credit for all they do by those who are most successful. They give their students a needed boost and confidence to achieve more than they think they can. They help them to think outside their own understanding of the world around them and to try new ideas and possibilities that can change a student's life, that can raise them up, as Josh Groban sings, to be more than they can be. We read the Gospel of John a few moments ago, and it's a story that seems a little bit out of place. Matthew, Mark, and Luke put this story at the end of Jesus' ministry during Holy Week, after Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But John places the story at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus had just been baptized and then called his first disciples and turned water into wine at the wedding at Cana. And now it was his first Passover of his ministry and he headed to Jerusalem. And he didn't like what he saw going on at the temple. There was a marketplace going on that was set up to take advantage of people, especially poor people. The money changers were the most obvious scoundrels there. The Jews came to give their offerings, but they had to give it in temple coins. But the, in the rest of the world, they used Roman coins, so they had to exchange them. Now, if you've ever traveled to another country and needed that country's money, you had to exchange your American dollars. If you were flying to your destination, it was tempting to exchange your money at the airport in the new country. But frequent travelers know that you don't want to exchange your money at the airport. At the airport, you get the least amount for the exchange. The airport exchangers take the biggest chunk out of your money. The money changers at the temple were similar to airport exchangers. They didn't give a fair exchange. They took more for themselves than was fair. And this made it even harder for poor people to give their tithes 
to the temple. And this made Jesus angry, and he turned over the tables of the money exchangers. Here we find that Jesus was making his present known quickly in Jerusalem, and he was confronted about his actions. The Jews said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? What makes you think you have authority to do this? And just who do you think you are? But Jesus wasn't deterred by them. So he answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you think you're going to raise it up in three days? But they didn't understand that Jesus was talking about the temple of his body. Jesus was talking about being killed and then being raised up in three days. But I think Jesus has even a bigger message for us all here because we all go through life at times when others try to tear us down. Whether they try to do this because of jealousy or anger, they may try to do this to make themselves feel better. And we know that gossip is one way that we tear people down. We make judgments about how others look or how they live or what's going on in their lives or with their families. People tear others down to gain an advantage in the workplace or to look better in the public eye. We certainly see this all the time now in the political forum. And unfortunately, social media is often used as a tool to tear people down. Young people have been known to use social media to torment others in their schools and their neighborhoods. Bullies tear down another person who may look different or who is quiet or who they just want to assert power over. There are bullies in all ages and in all sectors of society. So Jesus knew that others were being torn down. God's children, these temples of God, were being taken advantage of and being persecuted and oppressed. At this time, the beginning of his ministry, he was taking a stand that he was going to raise up those who were torn down. He would build them up. He would heal them. He would offer them grace. He would love them. As followers of Jesus, we too can raise others up. We can offer grace. We can love. This season of Lent, we are looking for ways to be up to something good for God. Instead of tearing others down, we can raise them up. You may have heard the story this week of Ruth Gottesman, who made an amazing gift to the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. On Tuesday, it was announced that she gave a gift of one billion, yeah, that's B, one billion dollars. When her husband died, he left the money to her and told her, do whatever you think is right with it. So she gave the one billion dollars to the College of Medicine where she had been a professor. The donation will make it so that all fourth year students at the university will be reimbursed for their spring 2024 semester tuition and then starting this August all students would receive free tuition. Now each year's tuition at the College of Medicine costs more than $59,000. So the, dono the donation will save students well over $200,000 over the course of four years. This gift is saving students thousands and thousands of dollars, but it is more than a gift to the school and to the students. It is also a gift to the healthcare community and to the community around the school. The school is located in the poorest county of New York. So this gift will bring improved health care to the people of the Bronx. Ruth Gottesman is raising up the care for people in the school and outside the school. Her gift is changing and raising up lives. 
In a world where there is so much violence and so many angry words, I saw hope in so many acts of raising others up this week. I don't often watch American Idol, but I happened to see it this week. And a young singer named Ziggy came to audition. Now Ziggy's hair was on one side half pink and on the other half it was blue. And he had an eccentric appearance and personality. Ziggy had been on the Netherlands Idol and there he came in seventh place. Ziggy has talent. And Ziggy told about his experience where people said that he was a nothing and had no talent. Ziggy's mother had been a drug, is a drug addict and so there's no contact with him and his mother. And he had a rough relationship with his father. And Ziggy's father died just a few years ago. So idol judge Katy Perry asked Ziggy, well then, who raised you? And Ziggy sheepishly and a bit sadly said, I raised myself. After Ziggy gave a great performance, the judges responded with kindness and affirmations. And Judge Lionel Richie told Ziggy that God gave him a gift and he wants people to know it. Judge Luke Bryan's response was most revealing and a good lesson for us all. Luke said, over the seven years of doing American Idol, I know how much I've grown as a person. Seven years ago, if you came in, I would have thought, who is this crazy person? But now I think this is going to be a fun audition. After experiencing so many people tearing Ziggy down, he received these final words from Lionel Richie. You raised yourself. Now we're going to raise you up. All the judges said yes to having Ziggy go on in the next level of competition. It's so uplifting to have stories like these told, but it doesn't take a billion dollar gift. And you don't have to have a student who goes on to be a great mind and political leader or be a judge on American Idol to raise up someone else. We all have the power to raise up someone else. One day when I was in the checkout line at Food Lion, the cashier had an older customer who was struggling with coupons and her payment method. The cashier was so patient and so kind to this customer. The cashier helped the customer read the payment cards and helped her get organized to use the cards that she had. Now those of us in line watched as the cashier gently got the customer's groceries bagged and in the cart after a long struggle to get the payment method figured out. It was obvious that the customer was relieved that no one was anxious or getting frustrated with her and that the cashier had been so patient and helpful to her. Now after that customer got out of the door, the next person in line told the cashier what a good job she did. The cashier smiled and was thankful for the nice words rather than someone fussing about how long it took. That customer then checked out and went straight to the manager. I'm sure that manager was not thrilled to hear someone ask to see the manager. But he was so pleased to hear that customer say how wonderful the cashier had been to the customer who was struggling. And the manager said that he would make sure that the cashier would be recognized for her good service. In just a few short minutes, simple acts of kindness raised up a struggling older customer, raised up a kind and patient cashier, and raised up a manager who had a good employee. I think Jesus would be pleased that there are stories of raising up temples rather than only stories of tearing temples down. What is our part in raising up God's temples, of raising up God's children? 
How do we take part in raising up others? How are we raising up people to encounter God, forming them to recognize and experience God's life-giving love in their midst so that then they can also share that same love with their neighbors? This is what we are looking to include in our lives as we are up to something good during Lent to continue throughout our lives. As people of God, as followers of Jesus and temple raisers, let us find ways to raise up others through simple acts of kindness and care. Let us show mercy. Let us show grace. Let us be the loving hands and hearts of God for the transformation of the world. Amen. Psalm 141 is an inspiration for our prayer time. Prayers in the temple were offered as the smoke of incense rose up and up, a symbol of taking prayers to God. We believe that God is here among us, within us, around us, as well as above us, for the Spirit of God is everywhere. But this season, we especially honor this idea that we ourselves are lifted up and upheld in the presence of the Divine One. Our spirits rise like the prayers of all through the ages. Let us sing. and action, your purposes and needs for your creation are often covered over and hidden from us. We prioritize our own wants and needs and we assume that what you want is what we want. We read scripture, we pray, we discuss, but our past conclusions, our past learnings, and our own self-centeredness make it easier to rely on what we think we already know rather than what you might be saying to us in the present. When Jesus turned over the temp tables in the temple, it was shocking. It brings up all kinds of questions. How could a simple man of peace, how could the Son of God take away long-standing tradition and the way it's always been? It was a pattern that kept life going for them. It scares us that you might turn the tables or pull the rug out from us. We have to really look deep at our relationship with you. Do we really trust you to lead us into something good? Or are we self-centered enough to hope that you take into account our own interests first and then the needs of those who don't follow you as closely? We ask you to understand our grieving as things and activities and thoughts processes change. As we ask you to bless those who are ill in body and mind and spirit and those who have to make difficult decisions, we ask you to push us as we commit to do something this week that can lift someone else up and as we commit to receiving the blessings when someone offers us the same. And most of all, Lord, we give you thanks for Jesus, your Son, the Christ, and your Holy Spirit in the world in which you live. For in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we're surrounded by your love and care. In Christ's name, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. together as
as our closing hymn, How Firm a Foundation. If you have a hymnal, it is number 529. ready to encourage and raise your neighbors up from a foundation built on grace, holding fast to the vision God has for the earth, knowing that you have all you need to be up to something. When someone asks you what are you up to, you can respond, with God's help, I am up to something good. Let God's people say, Amen. <laughs> 